Hi guys and welcome again. Let us continue our discussion on the very mechanisms and methodologies which can be used to solve a triangle and hence find successfully all the six components which make a triangle or bring a triangle into existence. Till now we have discussed about several tools, several methodologies which can be adopted by in order to solve a triangle. Starting with sine formula, we moved on to the cosine formula, after which we moved on to the projection formula, then the tangent formula also called the Napier's analogy, after which we also found out formulas of the trigonometric ratios of half angles corresponding to the three angles sitting in the triangle ABC. After that, we moved on to a very interesting article known as the area of a triangle wherein the area of a triangle was not just half into base into height. That traditional conventional formula got transformed and extended into a much nicer version. Well, we used all the six components of the triangle to find out area of a triangle in different different forms. If the three sides are given to you, can you find out the area? Yes, of course, we have the Heron's formula to do that. If suppose one side is given to you and all the three angles are given to you, you can find out the sine ratio of all those three angles and by using that one side and the sine ratio of the three angles, again you have a formula for area of a triangle. Or if suppose two sides are given to you and one of the angle is given to you and then you can definitely find out the very area of triangle in even that case. And so, depending upon which components are given to you and the very use of the previously learned tools in order to solve a triangle, you can successfully use any of the formulas and hence compute the area of that triangle. And that means our list of the formulas for the just one concept that is area of triangle was pretty long. That one single formula got extended into many different dimensions and you need to keep account of it. What today I have for you is something known as the MN formula. Now what is this MN formula? This formula has another name. What is that? That name is cotangent formula. Yes. Just like there was a tool with the name sine formula, then there was a tool with the name cosine formula, then there was a rule with the name tangent formula. In a similar manner, I have cot function. Cot ratio is going to come into picture in the cotangent formula and hence establish relationship between the different elements of a triangle. How and why was the need to bring or start with the cotangent formula? What is the objective? What is the motive of this cotangent formula? Well, if I give you an arbitrary picture of a triangle, all of you are aware if suppose this is my vertex A, B and C. In this case, if from a vertex I drop a pup perpendicular say AD on the opposite side. So I have chosen the vertex as A and the opposite side to vertex A is the side BC. So if I drop a perpendicular from A to BC, I divide my entire triangle into two right angled triangles. And I know the moment I have entered into right angled triangles, I can use the trigonometric ratios to establish relationships between angles and the sides. And therefore, if you have from one vertex dropped a perpendicular on the opposite side, in this particular case, you can very easily establish relationships between sides and the angles or the different components of the triangle. The question is, over here, it's fine to deal with the relationships between different components of the triangle ABC. But what if in a triangle, say again with the traditional name that we have been following ABC, 
suppose that from one vertex to the opposite side I do not draw a perpendicular instead I draw any line any particular line if I draw from the vertex any vertex you can pick up on the opposite side so suppose this is not a perpendicular but just any line AD on the opposite side BC of the vertex A will in this case also I'll be able to establish relationships between the three sides and the three angles of the triangle ABC or not that is the question which was the motivation behind the establishment of the cotangent formula the question was just very simple if you pick up any vertex of a triangle and drop a perpendicular on the opposite side of that vertex you will be able to study about the relationships between the six components of the triangle that's very very easy because trigonometric ratios come into picture and they do that task very easily the question is if I choose any vertex and drop any random line on the opposite side of that vertex am I still going to be able to get any relationship between the six components of the triangle ABC that is what is going to be the question answered by the cotangent formula cotangent formula says just consider a triangle and a vertex from which you are drawing any line AD on the opposite side BC okay suppose this point D is dividing the line BC in the ratio M is to N yes that is why this is coming into picture I am saying suppose the point D divides the side BC in the ratio M is to N that is BD is to DC this ratio is equal to M is to N or I can say that BD upon DC is M upon N because obviously this point D is lying on this line BC so obviously it is going to divide this line BC in a certain ratio either it will be 2 is to 1 or 3 is to 2 whatever is it I am saying that ratio is in the form of M is to N that is why it is very very important to first find out what is the ratio in which point D divides the side AC because that is what is going to play the role of M and N and they are the two alphabets which are really really important in the very cotangent formula that's why I've marked this as equation number one how are we going to use this how is it going to occur in the cotangent formula what is the cotangent formula all these questions will be answered pretty soon let's get started over here if you carefully see this is my side AB opposite to angle C and so this happens to be the side C this is my angle A opposite to angle A I have my side small a this is my angle B and so opposite to angle B this in the triangle ABC is my side small b just suppose in this particular setup in the triangle ABC I am considering a random line AD dropped to the opposite side BC such that it divides the line or divides the side BC in the ratio M is to N in this case suppose this angle which it forms is say alpha this angle which it forms is suppose say beta suppose this angle which it forms is say theta and therefore because obviously these two angles are adding up to give 180 degrees they are supplementary angles and so this is going to be automatically 180 minus theta 180 degrees minus theta or you can write pi minus theta 
because they add up to give you 180. So if this is theta, this is 180 minus theta or you could have taken this to be theta. So this, this would have been 180 minus theta. That's how both these angles are dependent on one another. You cannot just mark them as independent just like you did over here. Over here, alpha plus beta is angle A. That much we know. But over here, because theta plus this angle was 180, this angle happened to be of the picture 180 minus theta, dependent upon theta only. So suppose this is the entire setup that is built up. In any triangle, if you have from a vertex, any random line is drawn to the opposite side, you definitely are going to have some alpha, some beta, some theta, definitely are going to have and definitely are going to have some ratio in which this D is going to divide the opposite side BC for the vertex A. If all these things will always be there in such a setup, obviously my formula is going to depend upon all these things. My derivation of the cotangent formula, which basically exists to establish relationship between all the six components of the triangle, based on the concept that if from a vertex any random line is drawn on the opposite side, then how is the relationship between all the six components exercised? For all that, we need certain points. We need the ratio in which that line dropped from capital A divides the opposite side BC. We need this angle alpha, we need the angle beta, we need the angle theta and hence we need the angle 180 minus theta. Once these tools are with us, let's get started to understand and derive the cotangent formula and see the magic that it is not just the perpendicular which is drawn in which case it is possible to get the relationship between the sides and the angles or the relationship between all the six components of a triangle. But in fact, if any line is drawn from the vertex to the opposite side, even then by the cotangent formula, it is possible to get the relationship between all the six components. Yes, you're going to see that just right now. Let's get started with the proof. Firstly, consider the triangle ABD. In this particular triangle, if you see, this is one individual triangle in which I can apply my sine formula, obviously. I can very well apply my sine formula. Over here, if you again observe in triangle ABD, you know the length of AB, you don't know what is BD and you don't know what is AD. So let's keep BD and AD as it is, but we'll substitute in place of AB, C. Let's do that. By the sine formula, what is it that we have? By sine formula in triangle ABD, I know the ratio of the sides of this triangle with the sine ratio of the angles opposite to these sides, they are equal. So what are the sides of this triangle ABD? AB, BD and AD. The ratio of the sides of this triangle with the sine of the opposite angle. So AB is the first side. The angle opposite to it is 180 minus theta in the triangle ABD. So you get sine of 180 minus theta. After that you have the side BD and the angle opposite to side BD is alpha. So here you have sine alpha. Then you have the side AD and opposite to AD you have angle B. So here we'll have sine of B. And so sine formula says that these ratios are equal. Can you somehow from this particular fact of sine formula used in the triangle ABD, can you find out the length of the side BD? Why not we connect these two by using the fact that AB is of length small c and sine of 180 minus theta is what? Well, if you remember, you all know that this is 0, this is pi by 2 and this is pi. 
So pi minus theta is going to lie in the second quadrant. And what is sine in the second quadrant? Remember? Well, we have ASTC as the rule. All positive sine and cosec positive. So sine is positive in the second quadrant. In fact, sine of 180 minus theta in the allied angle section we have done, that sine of 180 minus theta is sine theta. That is what is the case with the sine ratio. And once these facts are known, we know that I am going to write instead of sine of 180 minus theta, positive sine theta. So this gets transformed to this. BD remains as it is. I don't know what BD is. Upon sine alpha. I've just considered these two because they both are equal by the sine formula. And so, can you from here somehow compute the value of BD? Of course, BD is nothing but small c into sine alpha upon sine theta. Let me name this as equation 2. So, first focus is on the ratio in which point D divides the side BC. The second focus was to individually find out BD and therefore the third focus will be to individually find out CD in which case I will have the length of entire BC which is equal to small a being broken up into two lengths BD and CD. Now obviously CD is a part of triangle ADC that means after considering and working on the triangle ABD for finding out the side BD, we now need to move on to the triangle ADC to find out the side DC. So let's do that. In triangle ADC, what is it you need to consider? Again, by the sine formula, You know that the ratio of the three sides of this triangle. So what are the three sides? AD, DC and AC. AD, DC and AC. The ratio of these sides with the sine ratio of the angles opposite to them. So AD, the first side is AD. The angle opposite to the side AD is your angle C. So here you will have sine of angle C. CD or DC is the second side. Angle opposite to it is beta. So you will have sine of beta. AC. AC happens to be the third side. And angle opposite to it is theta. So you will have sine of theta. These ratios are equal when you are taking ADC into picture. That is what you need to understand. And then after this, if you carefully observe, as I told you, we are going to work on this triangle in order to find out CD. Now, before I focus on CD, somehow I know that in this triangle, I only have length of AC with me. I don't know what is the length of CD. I also don't know what is the length of AD. So I'm just going to replace AC by small b. So your AC becomes small b upon sine theta. And now I am interested in connecting these two. So small b upon sine theta is equal to CD upon sine beta. And therefore from here, very easily you can find out what is CD, which is my this particular length. So this implies that CD is equal to B into sine beta whole upon sine theta. This is what is your equation number three. So what are my three equations? The first one gives me the information about the ratio in which the side BC is divided by this dropping of the line from the vertex A or by this point D. 
It's divided in the ratio m is to n. Now, if the ratio is m is to n, then what is my BD? What is my CD? By sign formula applying to each of the triangles,